Ben Elton is a regular presence here, both live and on our TV screens as one of Britain's best-known comedians. But he's also an author. Remember Stark and Gridlock? And his latest book, Popcorn, almost got shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year. Set in Hollywood on the night of the Oscars, it confronts the very relevant question of screen violence and copycat crime. I was toying with ideas. I felt I wanted to write something. And the uh, copycat killing debate was very big in the UK at the time because Natural Born Killers, the Oliver Stone picture, had just been banned. And there were some kids in France who were shooting people and claiming Oliver Stone was a major influence on their work. And I was reading a lot of UK copy, very respected writers and opinion formers, who were quite kind of gung-ho about making this connection. They weren't saying, is it positive? They saying, it must surely be that the kids are now seeing so much violence in films that this must be correlated and connecting with real life. And I thought, well, this is an extraordinary thing because if, if, if the editor of the London Times can make this connection, then surely so can the punks. And they're going to see in this a plea in mitigation. They're going to see an excuse. And we, I had this vision of, an, of a nightmare world in which Hollywood directors are in prison for murder and real murderers are on Oprah whining about how Hollywood has rendered them dysfunctional. Are there any films that have ever really shocked you where you have thought that the violence has gone too far? Oh, definitely. Many times. But I don't quite know how I'm to deal with that in a public sense because censorship is an extremely dangerous weapon to wield. Art, when it's controlled by politicians, is almost always bad art. So it's all very easy to say, well, I just thought that was disgusting and I certainly wouldn't want myself to see it, let alone kids. Now, that's great. We can all say that. But to enforce that is a very different thing because the body count of Hamlet and Pulp Fiction is identical, for instance. Who is to say what is acceptable mayhem and what isn't? I am to think Pulp Fiction is a very fine movie. I didn't like Reservoir Dogs. I found the ear-cutting scene revolting and I, I wished I hadn't seen it. But to enshrine that in legislation is very, very difficult indeed, because w w who is to say what will cause someone to become unbalanced? You mentioned Tarantino, but mm. in fact, your film director in Popcorn, Bruce Delamitri, seems to me to owe a lot more to Oliver Stone than he mm. does to Tarantino. Is that right? Yes. I mean, I, I'm not a journalist. I don't report, but I do use real life to inspire my fiction. And there's no question that there's a great deal of satire on Hollywood in, in Popcorn. Um, and I would say, with a lot of other, else, other things thrown in, my director is probably Tarantino's style and Oliver Stone's kind of uh, pomposity, his, his status. massive status and his opinions, you know. Yeah, I would say that intellectually my character is more Oliver Stone. And of course Oliver Stone is the one who finds himself particularly in the middle of this debate, because since writing the book, it turns out Oliver Stone is being sued, not yet by the villains, but certainly by the victims. Next step has got to be the villains. I mean, if, if Stone loses this case against the victims of random violence, well, you know, you know about this case, do you? No, I don't. I was just going to ask you, in mm. fact, the question about whether you agreed with John Grisham, the author who has said that people who are the victims of copycat crimes inspired by movies should be suing Hollywood directors, and now you're telling me that this is, in fact, happening. This has... it, it is happening. I think John Grisham's um, point is... is is deeply and darkly reprehensible. I think the man should be absolutely ashamed of himself. This is a highly intelligent man, a trained lawyer, who is allowing understandable emotions. He apparently knew somebody who was the victim of a terrible killing spree by two hor horribly drug-addicted adolescents who later on said that they'd been watching Natural Born Killers before they went on their spree. Now, one sympathises, and when one reads Grisham's his articles about it calling for Stone to be vilified, to be imprisoned virtually. Um, it's very emotive. But what does this intelligent, cultured man think will happen if this case is won? Because now it's come, coming true, a victim, a victim of random violence is suing, uh, suing Stone. He's never met her, probably never been to the state in which it's happened, certainly never met the killers, the perpetrators. If the case is won, the next step must be for the perpetrators to sue Stone. So then, that can't be anything else. I mean, obviously, if the, if the victim can say, you made him do it, then the killers can say, you made me do it, and you are responsible. This is what my book is actually about. And we will have an art and a culture in which people are being asked to second-guess the unknowable reactions of criminal maniacs. In your book, in Popcorn, your director, Bruce Delamitri, is forced into a situation where he has to debate uh, with a murderer on the responsibilities mm. that he may or may not accept for mass murder. Would you like to see that happen in real life? Would you like to see Oliver Stone 
and a copycat killer on TV? No, I think it would be insane because a copycat killer is a is a is an imbalanced maniac who must be treated, certainly restrained. And Oliver Stone is a sane and legal filmmaker who's made some great work and some very very poor work, in which I include Natural Born Killers. It is my my fiction is that nightmare vision that if we so confidently the likes of Grisham so confidently make this fatuous correlation we are creating a blame culture where the kind of highest profile Oliver Stone is gonna is gonna take the rap for the fact that America is murdering itself on the streets it's pathetic